Thank you, Germany. And good evening, fellow Republicans. It's nice to hear an answer like that. Sometimes in Arlington, I'd say that and hear an echo. <laughs> there were years we couldn't have mass meetings in Arlington. There was no mass. The best thing you could say about our committee meetings were they qualified for the HOV three lanes. <laughs> and yet, and I'll come back to what it means for this race. We've done it a couple of times. We did defeat them twice in general elections for the countywide school board, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm in this race. But let me first bear some greetings. My bride of 28 years, Martha, wish she could be here with you tonight. We have two children whom we're very proud of Virginia colleges, my son Kenny at the University of Virginia, and daughter Colleen at the Shenandoah, right up the uh, Shenandoah Conservatory, right up the road, and Colleen's home. And the family's having a birthday dinner for our new nephew. They took a vote and unanimously decided they'd like Martha to be with them. <laughs> this is a familiar pattern, of course, because like Governor Allen and uh, Delegate Gilbert, I'm married to vote myself. But she sends her greetings. She's very much into this, uh, served with uh, Representative Phil Crane on the Hill before we got married, and is uh, a tireless worker on the cause, and uh, uh, sends you her best wishes and appreciates all you're doing for the party. People ask me, you've got a great family, a very successful private law practice, a full right divorce, why do you want to be Attorney General of Virginia? Well, two reasons. I love this Commonwealth, and I love this party. I can help both as your nominee. My family goes back a long way in Virginia. Most of you have been to Colonial Williamsburg, I mentioned sometime. Maybe some of you saw on the road out to Interstate 64 as you left that Virginia historical marker on the right-hand side of the road that says, Patrick Napier, colonial surgeon. Well, that was my great-grandfather, seven generations back, who had the misfortune to be a surgeon in the Scottish Army in 1650, when it was demolished by Cromwell. So he was one of the first to hear those immortal words, go west, young man. And he did. He landed in the Williamsburg area in the 1650s and was one of the first surgeons in the colonies. And apparently, by the way, very energetic, too. The last line of that historical marker is, he was the progenitor of most of the Napiers in America today. <laughs> That's, of course, my mom's side of the family. The natives migrated by the 18th century to southern Albemarle County, where Martha and I own now the farm that they carved out of the wilderness there in present day Coesville and your old district, Governor Allen. They had sides from Southside, a farming community you've never heard of, like uh, Green Bay, Meharan, perhaps you've heard of, if you know my district relation, who was far more successful than any of the Fosters, Roy Clark. But since 1981, we've been back to my birthplace of Arlington. My roots in the party are almost as deep. 1975, after undergraduate school, where uh, Governor Allen and I were uh, colleagues, I went to the Hill to work for Bob Daniel, who was his legislative director for three years, holding down the 4th Congressional District. Went back to Arlington and joined the Arlington County Republican Committee. Not a very politically popular thing to do in the, what we call the People's Republic of Arlington, <laughs> but I've been a member of that for 25 years. 1996, John Warner asked me to chair his re-election campaign in Arlington after securing his promise that he would support the nominee of the party, whoever it was, I agreed to do that. And we fought off and fought to a draw, even in the People's Republic, a young hooker snapper named Mark Warner. Thank God we did, because otherwise he might have gotten that Senate seat six years earlier. And in 2007, Michael Steele, then head of GOPAC, asked me to run something called GOPAC Virginia, where we ran around the Commonwealth doing seminars for state and local Republicans on how to be a successful candidate, something Michael thought I knew something about and raise money for our battle General Assembly candidates like Senator Cuccinelli. So I care where we go out of the chaos that was 2008. And that takes me back to my experience. Twice in the last quarter century, the Arlington Democrats have lost general elections. They lost to me countywide for a school board seat in 1999 when we defeated the wife of a Democratic delegate, Al Eisenberg. And in 2003, they re-elected me over 62 percent of the vote. We took barely, virtually every precinct in Arlington. What does that got to do with this year's races? Our top priority this year has to be to elect Bob McDonald governor and elect Bill Bowling lieutenant governor. And I am running because I think I can help them in the toughest part of this commonwealth. It doesn't get any tougher than the People's Republic. 27 percent for John McCain. I think Governor Allen got 26 percent, as fine a man as he is. Jerry Kilgore. 25%. Northern Virginia is trending this way. We are losing our statewide races from here north by six digit margins. We've got to turn that around, and I've shown I have the ability to attract those independents 
and conservative Democrats who share our values. And that's point number two. I didn't get elected, even in Arlington, by sacrificing our common sense conservative principles. I won, as a matter of fact, running against racial preferences in the school system and prevailed. They dropped those the month after I was elected. I ran for reducing the debt on taxpayers. My first term as chairman, because after that landslide re-election, the four Democrats on the board made me their chairman the next time. My first term as chairman, we had the smallest bond in 20 years in inflation-adjusted terms for schools, because we took money out of the operating budget and put it into construction to take that much off the backs of future generations. A stark contrast to what's happening across the river these days. And I ran for teaching English early to our second language learners, not bilingual education, not lower standards, but teaching English in the pre-kindergarten and kindergarten stages to all of our second language learners. These are common sense conservative principles that we applied and articulated so that independents and conservative Democrats could see that we were on their side along with our Republican base. And that's the attitude I take to the race for Attorney General. I hope you'll take a look at my website, DaveFoster.com, and the literature. You'll see some of the things I care about. I like to offer common sense conservative solutions to real problems on people's minds. Things like voter fraud. I knew that ACORN, you know, you know about ACORN, obviously, the Association for the Commission of Outrageous Registrations now. <laughs> I knew they were Mickey Mouse before they invested him as a voter. I think your Attorney General has a role in investigating and rooting out voter fraud wherever it may occur. I say the same thing about waste of taxpayer dollars. We need somebody with a statewide capability go after that. It should be your attorney general. Education obviously matters deeply to me after eight years on the school board and two terms as a chairman. And I admired what Governor Allen did with the Standards of Learning program in Virginia. It put us in much better shape to try to comply with the No Child Left Behind Act and it's No Child Left Behind has salutary purposes. But I'll tell you this, when we have problems to address in our schools, I don't want any federal bureaucrat telling your local school board how to address them. That is an issue of local control and accountability in my mind. And as counsel for the Department of Education in Virginia, which the Attorney General is, I will fight for local control and accountability. <laughs> internet safety. Bob McGonagall uh, honored me with a position on his Internet Safety Task Force. We did a lot of good things for uh, children, helping protect them against sexual predators and cyber bullets. Let's take that to the next step. Let's take the internet fraud and abuse fight to all of those misuses of the internet that deprive seniors of their savings and young people of their credit worthiness, mortgage fraud, all the things that involve the internet. Your attorney general should have a role in going after when it's misused. And that's pro-business. Business people will tell you the bad guys don't do any of us any favors. That's a pro-business step. And I'm gonna close with that because there's one thing I've been saying since we began these debates last month among the attorney general candidates that I think is going to dominate this race, and it's the economy. It's what we heard in 1992. Remember Jim Carville telling us that the economy is stupid? And we didn't get it in time. We lost the first Bush presidency. We elected Bill Clinton. We get it this time. Bob McDonald's talking about it. Bill Bowling's talking about it. And I'm talking about it. As Attorney General, you know what your Attorney General does. He runs the third largest law firm in Virginia. That's my background. 28 years of Fulbright and Dorsey, I have represented businesses in a large law firm. I know how to appeal to businesses. I know what brings them to a state, what encourages them to stay in a state, to expand in the state. And I know how to help explain to the voters of Virginia what that means to them, which is jobs creation. 6.4% unemployment now in Virginia and on the rise. 50,000 of our fellow Virginians lost their jobs this last month. It's going to be about the economy. And we have to show the voters of Virginia that we are the pro-business party. Terry McCullough's talking about it. That's all his ads are. He'll bring jobs to Virginia. Well, it'll be hit jobs and patronage jobs, probably. But he's talking about bringing jobs to Virginia. We have to show we're the ones who know how to bring jobs to Virginia, and they'll entrust us again with the reins of this great state. Now, it won't be easy. It never has been in Arlington. When I first declared my interest in elective office, I'll never forget a civic activist I thought was a good friend coming up and saying, Dave, is it true you're a Republican? As if I had leprosy? I said, well, yes, Sally, I've been a Republican for some time. How could you